This is the armoire that is from France. My aunt um, purchased it and had it delivered from Lyon, France back in the 80s and shipped here to the Big Island. And uh, the, it, it was very expensive to do that back then even. And this piece is extraordinary. I'm going to show you some things about it that make it very special. And I'm going to try to stay out of the mirror. So here's, here's an example of the kind of carving that you can see in this wood. This is a walnut. And as I scroll down here, the front side here, you'll see each side has locking drawers. We have a key that works most on most of the locks. I think what it is is that some of the locks are sticky and they might need oiling or something, but, um, but it works on most of, most of the locks. There's one key for the drawers and there's one key for the big door. Anyway, what I want you to notice is that this is one continuous piece of wood. And then we have more carving up along in here too. And at the top, the very top of this is nine feet high, which is requires a high ceiling for someone to have. So I want you to get another look at this. I'm gonna to go to the other side and show you the other side, which is similar, but I want you to see that it's also in excellent condition. So here's the other side of the armoire. And I want you to look up here and again, notice the carving on this side, a little different. And again, one big piece of wood. I don't know if you could even get that anymore. You can see that nice figured wood on the side here. One big piece. So this is a very special piece of furniture. There's, from what we've been told by experts who have, who, who have seen it either in photographs or in person, they say they've never seen anything like it. So here's the, here's one of the drawers. Here you can see the lock, the lock works. And that's um, true of other drawers too. Ones with, with working locks. Now some of them, as I mentioned, so I don't know if this is one of them. Oh, there, see, it works. So um, these, these are a couple, a couple hundred years old and they're working great. So I, I think I found a couple of drawers where the locks were a little sticky and I didn't want to push it. So now here is the front of the armoire and you can see it's huge mirror. And that mirror is old, as you can see. And it shows some signs of age, but it is beveled. It's very nice and it has a lock that you can see here. And the lock works as we can demonstrate. I'll try to hold the camera and do the lock at the same time. There's the lock. It works very well. You can see this is just ginormous inside. Beautiful wood inside and out. Lots of room. Could even almost rent this out as an Ohana. It's so big. So you get the idea. What we're looking at here is six feet wide and its total width, nine feet tall. As I try to back up to get the whole thing in frame, you get an idea of what we're, what we're talking about. It's a spectacular piece of furniture. Now, the next thing I want to show you is the bed, which is matching. The carving on the bed matches the carving on the armoire, as you can see. And again, it's beautiful. You'd think after all these years, there'd be little pieces missing or scratches or dents you just don't see that it's in really really beautiful shape and this is a solid piece of furniture 
And I mean solid in that it's not wiggly. You know, it's firm. It's made to, to last. And uh, I'll show you the headboard. Get you a good look at that too. And as you can see, there's um, shape to it as well. Not just flat boards, but this was popular back in the mid 1800s to do this, I guess, according to the research I've done. But you can look at that beautiful carving work. You're not gonna find that anywhere at any price um, in new furniture these days. This, this is beautiful. It was shown the headboard, footboard, rails, and the armoire. Uh, according to what my auntie s wrote down and what she told me personally, is that this was shown at the French Exposition in 1878, I think it was. And this was supposed to be a demonstration of what the French could do with furniture. And obviously, it is spectacular. Okay, the next piece I want to show you is lot number five, and it's a secretary desk it's a french again french style and as you can see there's some finish issues for something this old it makes kind of sense that might have some but everything works all the drawers are in good shape open and close nicely i don't know if i got that first one but it opens and closes more drawers down here you can see the pictures at the auction site that shows all the drawers open but everything and there's a lock on these drawers haven't found the key for it though but you can see that this has a kind of a again curvy figured wood and I'll give you a kind of a up close look it's really a beautiful piece um, not sure what kind of wood it is I think it might be fruit wood uh, it's a little lighter and more, uh, I don't know how to describe it, a little, a little different than walnut. Could be the can, but I really think fruit wood is probably what it is based on what I've read. So, and you can see there's, there's this stuff on the top, but it's a beautiful piece. The other thing, and it would be easy to fix these finish problems, I mean, really, if you wanted to. But also you can see that this comes in part in two pieces. It's, it's locked in solid. Um, I think it's doweled. So that when this comes off, um, it's easier to transport. And the next piece I want to show you, I want to get out of the mirror here. Because what's important is not me. So here is this... Um, I don't know if I'd call it like a vaudeville style or French provincial because it's definitely fancier than what French provincial looks like usually. A little more frou frou y. But it is stunning. And this is one piece that everybody, every collector, and every auction house to a, to a person wanted this piece of furniture. It is um, what we call a period piece. That means it is very old, um, 17, late 1700s maybe, maybe early 1800s. You can see the tapestry uh, is still, it's faded, but it's still in pretty good condition. You can see there's a scene here of a, uh, looks like a young man and a woman having a picnic. Here's more of a, seen with flowers and birds and then the and you can see some of the carving i don't want to be in the picture really but get you some of the pictures of the carving here make you really understand how spectacular this piece really is I'll give you a look a real close-up look at some of this Beautiful carving work in this uh, French walnut. And then the back is fully covered too. 
I don't really want to move it to show you that. There's pictures of it on the auction site, so you can see very clearly what it is. So that is um, lot number seven. And you can see there's hinges also. Um, trying to stay out of this picture here. So this can this piece can fold and stand on its own. It doesn't need to lean on anything. Um, just like a privacy panel, something you'd get dressed behind for modesty purposes. Okay, this is lot number 12. Now, this is kind of one of my favorite pieces that we have to offer. Um, it's just made so nicely that um, I, it caught my interest. And what I mean by that is, this is a very old piece, but if you look very carefully, it's got very nicely inlaid wood. Again, I think this could be pecan or, or fruit wood, could be walnut. But look at these mortised joints, dovetail joints. They're, um, this, these were made long before they had electrical tools, so you know these were hand cut. And this drawer opens and closes like butter. I don't know how to, every one of them does. So that's what I want to point out is that they're just, it's just beautiful, it's smooth, it's in really good shape. You can see the book matched veneers are gorgeous. The metal work, where do you see that anymore? And in this condition, original, all original hardware. Then we have this marble top, and the marble top is not glued on. It can be taken off. I can see if you can see, you can move it if you want. Or you could glue it on if you wanted, but <coughs> it's quite heavy. <coughs> Excuse me, and it's, um, it's really beautiful. Give you a look at that marble top. It's uh, very, very nice. And that's one of the things I like about it, too. You can't scratch the top very easily. You really have to try. More view of this beautiful veneer. It's just something that, having shopped for furniture recently and looking for something that was durable and um, well-made and nice to look at. I just couldn't find anything. Most of it's made overseas and it's not uh, well-made necessarily, even at very high prices. This is something that you just won't find at any price, really. So I hope you like this piece. Again, that's lot number 12. Okay, next I'd like to show you lot number um, eight. Now this is a table, again, um, this is a special piece of furniture. I know I mentioned that every one of them is special, but that was what my aunt collected. And I'm gonna get down here where you can really see some of this carving. Um, look at that, isn't that amazing? To think somebody took the time to hand carve all this many, 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 many years ago. And this thing in the middle is called a stretcher. It goes from leg to leg, it stabilizes the legs. But they didn't just make some plain cross boards. They made this thing gorgeous. Look at the carving on that. So this is a beautiful piece. Um, some collectors that have looked at it and some art appraisers that have looked at it, antique appraisers, thought it could be a famous designer. Um, there's no way to prove that it is, so there's no signature, no special markings. It, it looks like one of his pieces, so I'm not going to mention the name because I don't want anybody to think I'm saying that's what it is, but um, it is a very, very beautiful table. Very nice one to have in your house. And so I'm going to move on now to the next piece, which is a lot number 10, since I'm already down here. It's right next, I'm right next to it. This is a, a little love seat, French provincial style. And again, you know, the, it's hard to really 
show the the detail, but I'm gonna try. You can see this is nicely carved and has a little tiny ding in it right there. You can see that, but nothing that couldn't easily be covered up, but I didn't want to try to cover anything up. I really wanted to just show you what we had as it is. And here we go. And you can see that the, the I, I don't know if you say it right, damask or damask type upholstery is beautifully done um, it's very comfortable to sit in and rock solid I mean, it's just it's not a wobbly bit to it and you can see too that the the way the upholstery is done too with all that edging it's really really pretty and then looking underneath the cushion it's all the same so you could even use it without a cushion if you wanted or do something different put pillows on it or something but this is just a gorgeous piece of furniture. Another thing that just says class and style. Okay, on to the next piece. Okay, I want to show you lot number 73 next. This is a French clock, uh, again in walnut, carved nicely. Um, it's a wall clock. It's, looks like it's about four feet tall. I have the pendulum going right now, but I can tell you that after, after some time, it'll stop on its own. I don't know anything about clocks. Uh, I don't understand what you need to do to make that work right. Maybe it's just not level or balanced correctly or something, but it does run for a little while. And I did want you to hear the chime. So I'm gonna advance this to real close till I hear it kind of do its thing. Uh, so let's just go to the next one. And then you can hear the half hour chime. This is perfectly fine to do this, I'm told. Let's go to that. So, and then you can hear the, um, the hour chime right here. I think right about there. I don't know if I got that right. There it goes. I think it's going to go now. And you can see the You can see the pendulum stop. So that's what it does. And there's the wind up key is included. Um, I do not want to wind this or um, do anything with it that might harm it because I just don't know enough about them. So I would recommend that unless you want to use it just decoratively, which it definitely is beautiful, um, you know, have a watch or a clock guy look at it and I'm sure that can make it work for you. Okay, the next thing I want to look at, I want you to look at is uh, this gilded, it's gold, gilded, bronze, French clock. And I took lots of pictures of it, so you should be able to see how it works. Um, I do not, this, this front does open, I think it opens this way. The hinges on the other side, there we go. And it is one. It is a wind up, as you can see. I think it's in good shape. Um, as far as it working, um, I don't know. We have the key for winding it. Uh, it's missing. It a little has a little broken top on it, just barely noticeable. But otherwise, in really pretty good shape. Um, definitely adds a bit of class to anywhere it sits. So we have one more clock I want to show you. This is a little guy. I'll just put my hand here so you can see how big it is. Um, it has, again, I don't, it's a wind up type clock, as you can see back here. Again, I do not want to wind it or do anything to it. It may be just fine. It may work. I don't know. 
I don't want to mess with it. Um, so uh, it currently isn't doing anything, which is fine with me. It's just beautiful the way it is. Um, it's gilded, obviously, and it's a uh, very nice condition. So I hope that interests you. The next thing I want to show you is this little bronze statuette. Now, again, I'll put my hand here so you get an idea of the size. It's a lot number 40. This is called the Dancing Lady. And it is signed. Um, and it's it's a nice size. It's not too big. It's very, very pretty. So I hope you like if you like bronze, you're going to like that. So I'm going to move on to the next piece. This is a uh, a vase, and I'm going to turn it so you get a good look at it. It's kind of got this really rough, kind of crystally texture right here. The whole thing is kind of not smooth. It's rough feeling, which is kind of nice texture to this. I really like this myself a lot. But it's a beautiful piece. So on to another bronze. This is lot number 44, 41, sorry. And this is a fairy or nymph or something of some kind, obviously. I'll just do a little slow turnaround so you get a look at her. Don't look too long. And then you can see she's bronze, and you can see by size. I have very large hands, but you can see about how big she is. And then moving on to lot 58, we have this. Um, it's a mermaid, and she has a little uh, little guitar, or ukulele, or something in her hand. And this is um, typical of reproductions of pre-Columbian art. So, no doubt, it's a reproduction. Um, I believe it's at least 50 or 60 years old. At the, at, the, the, at the youngest. It could be older than that. All right, next item is lot number 61, and this is a Lotz um, glass dish. Now, it's not signed, as a lot of Lotz pieces are not signed. Um, it could have been made by another manufacturer of the era, but it's also very typical of Lotz style. So um, that doesn't make it less or more valuable. It's just a beautiful, a beautiful dish. And what I'd like to do, try to get it in the sunlight a little bit because it's just really pretty. The green, there we go. Kind of get a little idea of what the green looks like on there. It's really spectacular. It's like you don't see color in glass like that anymore. Okay, next thing, another Lotz piece. Now this guy, this guy is something special. Again, I'm going to try to get him in the sunshine. So you can see it's kind of got an iridescent type glass, which uh, according to what I've read, um, this was made in, I believe in Czechoslovakia, probably in the mid, early, mid 1800s. And Tiffany, or late, maybe it could have been late 1800s, I don't know. But Tiffany was, Tiffany and Lotz were the only ones that could make that finish. It's kind of, it's called Aurora Borealis type finish. It's, as you can see, it changes color as the light hits it. It's used, it's done by using metal fragments or particles in the, in the, in the firing. And nobody could do it except them. Of course, everybody could do it now, but that's what made this special. And it's kind of a, like a genie bottle. I kind of makes me think of my dream of genie. That old TV show. Oh, that's me. Dates myself a little. So here's another piece. This is lot 43. This is made of pewter. There's a little fairy. She looks like she's holding a little bird or something, which is kind of cute. But this is supposed to be actually a card tray. Um, I guess it could be a tray for anything, as you can see what it looks like. Now, this could polish up to a beautiful silver, but collectors prefer the natural patina. But of course, you could polish it, and it would be just gorgeous, almost chrome-like when you were done, if you wanted to do that. 
Okay, next lot 75 is this <clears throat> this doll, this a bisque head doll. And as I noted in the, the notes for the doll um, description in the auction, um, this is a reproduction. This is not an original Heinrich. And it's it's a um, there's other brands around that at the same time that would be worth oh three four thousand dollars if it was the original. But this is you know as far as how this looks and the pieces, um, it's got wooden articulating arms. This is very much like the original, but this was still made a long time ago and it's still in very good shape and it still carries value. Um, it's just not the original according to the markings on it and what I've been told by experts as far as like the face and the way the eyes are done and stuff like that. So get a good look at her little face there. Okay. So that's it for the small items. I will move on to some larger items. Okay, this is lot 39. And I think this is intended to be um, David with his harp. But I don't know. There's no way to know for sure. Um, I haven't found another one just like it anywhere. But it's quite, it's quite large. Again, I'll show you my... My hand right up against it so you can see he's a good sized boy and not light he's sitting on top of lot number 14 which is a black marble um, stand which is just gorgeous it weighs about 125 pounds I actually weighed it because I couldn't believe how heavy it was and it's um, very solid very nice just perfect for putting a bronze on like that, that would otherwise maybe be too heavy for a lighter stand. Okay, moving on. This is lot number 67. It's an original oil painting in a beautiful gilded frame. And it really is nice. It's got some nice detail to it. Very nice color. Um, signed. And that is lot number 67. It's sitting on top of a reproduction sofa table, which I have a nice blanket, as you can see, to protect it. That's lot number 19. And you can see that's the finish is in very, very nice condition, as is most everything else. The only thing about this table I would mention, it's on the corner, it's up against the wall right now, but on the on the corner, it's a little separated. And that's in the pictures, in the original description. If you look carefully, you'll see that. But I'll let you get a look at that. It's got nice carving. Then next to it, I'll show you the pair. There's a pair of these. Mm -hmm. um, these are lamp tables, essentially, or end tables. They're the right height for the sofa that we're also selling, the Chippendale sofa. You can see these are also ball and claw feet uh, with cabriole, cabriolet legs, and they're nicely carved. And these are reproductions, but they're really nice. Um, they're not, you know, often when you think of a reproduction, you think of something that's a fake or a knockoff. Well, nothing like that here. This is really just a beautiful piece of furniture that is designed to look like it came out of that period of time. But this, these are probably 30 or 40 years old. So the next item is lot number 72. I'm gonna set that there so you can get a good look at this. Now this is um, Asian, obviously. I, I don't know what it says, but you can look at the frame. It's kind of like a gold flat, it's supposed to, I think, resemble a bamboo. And it's, it's nicely framed and got a glass, it's got glass on it. Um, I don't see any kind of signature or any, anything else 
but it is nicely, as you can see, professionally, as, as is all the art here, it's all professionally framed. So there we go with that. Okay, the next one I'd like to show you is lot number 56. Move this out of the way. Now this is by an artist, Gene Wagoner. He's from Seattle. I, I think he's since passed away um, back about 17, 18 years ago. But he was known for his beautiful Western style paintings. And this is one of his original pieces. Very nice. Makes you think of the quiet, I think. That's, that's what I think about. So one of my, again, another one of my favorite pieces I'm going to show you here. And I'm going to try to get down on the level so I can show it to you because it's just beautiful. This is a lot number 32. This has a semi-translucent white curly marble top. And it's not light. It's fairly heavy. It's very heavily made wood. Highly decorated, as you can see, carved. It's got that nice stretcher on it. You can see it. This is really one of my another one of my favorite pieces that I would love to have take home with me, but it's just not possible. So um, enjoy it. It's it's something that I th you can bid on starting at a dollar. So the next one I want to show you is this one. This is lot number forty two. And it's described very well at the auction site. You can see it's not a small, not a small um, bronze at all. Very beautiful. And then next to that is lot number 37. It's an alabaster. Um, actually, it's a lamp. I don't know if it was originally supposed to be a lamp. But if you look inside, you can see that there's a lamp base, but there's the cord that comes out at the bottom is cut. So if you wanted to redo it, it wouldn't be that hard to pull a new piece of wire up there and put a new lamp base in and you have a lamp. So um, it's heavy and it's beautiful. It's very pretty, kind of a cream color. I don't know if I'm getting that though in this video, but it's very nice, lot 37. And then the back to our our largest bronze. This is lot number 38, I believe. This is a bonjour, and I all the information about the original designer is on the. Um, he's a French artist, well known for his work. Uh, he's made several busts, different busts of the same girl. And if you look on, uh, look him up online, you'll see what he what he did. But this is a beautiful piece. Um, these go for a lot of money. So we're again starting at a dollar. Um, you can, this would be a beautiful piece to invest in. Uh, I don't think there's any way you could pay too much for it here. All right, the next thing I want to show you is um, this Chippendale chair. And it's a reproduction, um, again, like I've said about reproductions, these there's some good good ones and there's some not so good ones. This is one of the good ones, as you can see. Again, nicely nicely carved, very good condition. I don't think there's a ding on either one of these chairs. There's two of them that are matching, and when you bid on one of them, you're bidding on one. And say you say you won this chair for a hundred dollars, let's say you'd win the other one for another hundred dollars as well. So just remember that you're bidding on the, the pair. Um, then we have this. This is lot number nine. This is a beautiful wing back chair. And I want you to notice the width of the chair is very nice, very comfortable for larger people. Um, it's also got a beautiful brocade fabric, which the pictures just do no justice to. 
And here's some amazing carving. That is supposed to be, I think, Louis the Fifteenth. As you can see, it's carved all the way around. And on the arms, we have ram's heads. And then there's another cameo down here in the bottom. Another very unusual piece. Next to it is a single pedestal mm -hmm. art stand. This is something you might put a bronze on or a piece of art or it could be a plant or, plant or a fern or something like that. A lot of things could make that. This could make very beautiful. And this is a very old piece too. And I think it's, uh, I, I can't date it exactly, but we know that it's definitely um, 19th century. Okay, with that said, I will go to the next piece. I need to move some furniture around, so I will get back to you. Okay, this next piece I'd like to show you is made of oak. Um, it came from Quebec, Canada. And there's a TV sitting on it, a large screen TV, and you can see easily works. The top's in very, very good condition. I don't think there's a mark on it. The TV is sitting on top of a, a piece of fabric that's protecting the top right now. There may be a few little, little light scratches there, I don't know. But it's in really good condition. It's got ample space inside, but I want you to look at these heads that are carved out of oak. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. And they're staring at each other, I think. You have a, a figure here and lots of carving. And if we look inside, like I said, ample space. Lots of room. So this could be a beautiful TV stand. It could be whatever you want it to be. But it's very nice. And you get an idea what this looks like. And there's, uh, again, beautiful carving. If you look at the sides, there is nice quarter sawn oak. Uh, very, very pretty. Uh, nice old piece of furniture that's in excellent condition, as is just about everything here. Um, very, very well taken care of and maintained over the years. Okay, so again, that is lot number 33. I'll show you this other side here. Okay. okay the next piece I'd like to show you is an etagier. It's a four-level etagier, as you can see, with cabriolet legs. And it's, they're just beautiful. It's, it's also gilded in places, lots of detail. This is a lot number 18. As you can see, it's a very nice shape. Of course, you got to remember these are old pieces of furniture. I don't think there's anything that's other than the reproductions that is much less than a hundred years old. Some are two, some are 300 years old. So that's what they are. But if you consider the, look at the condition. It's amazing. So there's a beautiful shelf system, which is what the French call an etagere. So right next to it, we have another etagere. This is lot number 23, different style, different period. Um, I don't know much about it. I just know that um, everyone that's looked at this piece said it was highly unusual. And that's typical of the things my aunt collected. You can see the top, the condition, and the condition of the shelves. Very, very nice. Very interesting little piece. Okay, the next thing I'd like to show you is this balloon chair. Now, it's called a balloon chair because it's got a big hole in the back. That's the way it's designed. It's what it's meant to be. And I kind of thought when I first saw this chair, I want you to see the way this is made. So I'm going to get down where I can show you. Um, that that would be uncomfortable. This wouldn't. But it isn't. Actually, it's quite nice. 
But here's what makes this chair special. Again, my aunt liked to collect different things. But look at that carving. Now, most balloon chairs are solid like this all the way around. But you can see this one isn't. This is called piercing, and it's just hand carving that's done all the way into this. I'm going to flip this so you can really get a good look at that. You see the nice damask type upholstery and the beautiful upholstery job that's been done on this. It really looks like hasn't been sat in. But with this is a period piece. This is a very old, old chair. Very solid. Um, I'm a big guy. I can sit in it and it feels very stable. So I just want you to know this is something special. Um, the last antiques appraiser that saw this was fascinated with it. He said he'd never seen in all of his 40 years experience an, a pierced balloon chair quite like this one. So it's worthy of your attention. Remember, it all starts at a dollar. So this is another piece. This is lot number 26. This is a sofa. And as you can see, Chippendale, ball and claw legs. And I'm gonna try to give you a good view. It's eight feet long, plenty big. One big cushion, so you're not gonna have to try to find where the quarter went in the middle. It, the fabric looks, it's kind of like a velvet, but it, I, th I think it's a lot more durable. I don't really know what they call this, but it's beautiful. And it, it stands up very nicely. I'll give you a picture of the side here. In the back I have a something I'm going to show you here right on behind it, but you can get the idea. It's called a camelback for obvious reasons. And tip to tip, it's about eight feet. It's a very nice piece of furniture. And it's noteworthy that the fabric on the sofa matches the fabric, as you can see over there, on those matching Chippendale style chairs. Now the next piece I'd like to show you, it's one I was alluding to a second ago. This is called a half moon table. And it's got that pineapple stretcher. A lot of carving on this. And this also is a reproduction. Again, likely 40, 40 years old or so. I know when my aunt stopped buying furniture. So that would have been in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. This is a beautiful piece. It would fit very nicely in with your Hawaiiana pieces if you had such. Okay, on to our next piece. Well, we have a painting here that it's going to be really hard to show you um, how beautiful it is. It's like four feet, four or five feet wide and uh, over two feet tall. And it's a picture of Notre Dame in France, a street scene. You can see, if you look carefully, the era with the horse and buggies, no, no cars, the newspaper stands and so forth. And I've um, explained the, who the painter is and is well known. Um, and then this is an original piece of art. In other words, there isn't another one like it. It's hand painted in oil. And it's got a beautiful, beautiful, kind of a washed frame get a good idea what that looks like came with it again that's lot number 44 it's sitting on top of lot number 17 I want you to get a good look at this I'd pick the picture up and show you that looks there's nothing behind there's nothing more to show you there's uh, this is a marble top the only thing about this marble top is a little there's a little ding right here little tiny ding right here. Other than that, I think it's in excellent, excellent condition. And the rest of the piece is also in beautiful shape. It's all curved glass. This is a famous designer piece as well. 
Uh, this designer is very well known for his, oh, I'm in the mirror, I don't want to be, uh, for his work. And if I get up close, you can see some of these hand-painted scenes. Just beautiful. And it's held up nicely. Very nicely. You can see the glass shelves are in good shape. Mirror on the back's in good shape. Got kind of a felt bottom. And a lot of metal work, as you can see here, up and down. Um, let me open it for you and get, a, get an idea of what it looks like inside. Here's the door, curved glass door. But absolutely stunning piece. Look at this hand painted art on this cabinet. My aunt had this cabinet stuffed with little items, um, just full of things that we have sold off one piece at a time. But now it's empty and it's ready to come into your home. It's just beautiful. So now for the golf lover, we're going to move on to these pieces. This is uh, Jacle and uh, with nicely framed, and it's described in the auction. This is number 64. These are pallet oils. In other words, what I mean is instead of using a brush, it looks like the artist used a pallet knife to do most of the work. Which gives it a certain kind of style. Lot 63, it's a low swing. Lot 62, high swing. If you're into golf, this will go nice. Now show you a lot number 54. This is an amazing piece of art. It's um, definitely a scene from an earlier time, a more innocent time of life. Beautiful. It is not on canvas, it is an oil, and it is painted by C. Briand, which is a well-known uh, artist who has, paints these sort of scenes. And if you look, Google him, you'll see that he's painted a lot of different kinds, and his work goes for uh, a reasonable amount of money. But look at this beautiful frame. This, this is gilded. And it's old, but it's really fantastic. Look at that frame. That's amazing. Okay. So we're going to move on to a couple more golf pictures. These are um, Waikoloa golf photographs, mounted and matted. Original. Now the frames honestly leave something to be desired, but they start at a dollar. Reframe them if you like. They're beautiful. The, the condition of the, the actual art is very nice. So moving on to the next piece, I want to show you Lot 74. This is an interesting piece uh, for the signature that's on the back of it. Actually, it's a um, picture of Big Island Volcano erupting. Um, and the the authors of Big Island Revealed uh, had went up in the, I think my uncle flew them up to take this picture, which was in the book, and they signed it for him. Next is this beautiful watercolor. Now this this particular scene has been reproduced a number of times, and actually this is... Um, based on an original piece, and I, the name of the original artist is in the um, description in the auction. This is lot 55, but the original piece is quite a bit taller. It shows the trees up higher and stuff, and this is kind of like a zoomed in version of it, but it is an original piece of artwork. It's not a print, so um, I don't know, you know what the origin of it is, but it is pretty neat looking and it captures captures the attention of everybody that sees it. Um, also, uh, kind of tells a story. 
So remember, everything starts at a dollar. So here we go with a Handel style lamp. Now, I'm not saying it's a Handel lamp. I don't know. It could be Pittsburgh uh, lamp. It could be a number of different makers. We could not find a signature on it, but that's typical of a lot of these lamps. And I will show you, that's both lamps turned on. Look underneath here and we have the, these are LEDs, but they're kind of an antique style. And um, we just had the, one of these fixed, one of the chain poles fixed. So that's newer looking. I have the old chain here in the, in the bottom. But this, it's got beautiful patina. The, um, this is obverse and reverse. So what that means is, as you can see, it's painted here on the outside, but it's also painted on the inside. So that gives you a special kind of a look when you turn it on. Let me see if I get both of them going here. There we go. And you see how that lights up very beautifully. This is a cranberry lamp. And I don't know why, I think it's just the color that makes it cranberry, but it's a beautiful mountain scene. Very peaceful, very nice to look at, with uh, what they call a chipped ice finish on the outside. I don't know if, it's, if you can really see that, but that's what that is. Very nice. This is probably about a hundred years old, by roughly. These regularly sell for three to five thousand dollars. Remember, everything starts at a dollar. Next piece I'd like to show you is lot number twenty. And this is a beautiful chair, armchair. And it has a beautiful fabric in very nice condition, as you can see. Oops, a little piece of something on there. But anyway, it's very nice. Carved. Um, I think it's. I don't know what kind of wood it is. To be honest with you, I'm not going to even venture a guess. I'll give you an idea of what this piece looks like. Very comfortable chair, very solid, very nicely made. And a, definitely a nice addition to any house. Next, I'd like to show you this leather office chair. Now, this is an old chair. This is lot number 34. It's got a beautiful kind of a blue-green leather. Well, well broken in, but in good shape. This is, um, I'm pretty sure, top grain leather. I don't think anything would last this long if it wasn't. Here's the back, full leather on the back. No fakey stuff in there. But this is an older chair. It creaks and groans when you sit in it. It has uh, these nice wooden handles for the arms. It's just so comfortable. That's the one thing I want to tell you about this chair. It's just, it's a chair you can sit in for a long time and be comfortable. We have a few more items left to show you. This is a little, I think an art stand or maybe just a little table side stand, uh, chair side stand, uh, lot number 29 and it's unusual it's not something you see again a lot of the things my auntie collected were different and it has some sort of a mark on the top a couple marks on the top I don't know how easy that would be to get out I'm not going to try next I want to show you this uh, well they call it a telephone table back in the day and this is a reproduction piece but they used to have, you know, you put your telephone on top. <laughs> it's a perfect time to show you this. Put your telephone on top. And there's the drawer. And then this little guy pops up. Little secret compartment underneath, right there. Okay. So that's a nice little piece, and it's mahogany. And again, the you can see the condition. Looks like almost brand new. 
just underneath it is this wall metal work mural of music. You can see there's a treble clef and some notes. I couldn't figure out what the song might have been. This is lot 76. Again, not something you're going to see just anywhere. Um, both my aunt and uncle were musicians and they loved their music. A lot of the things are music oriented, as you can see. So I'm going to go to this three-legged art stand, fern stand, lot 15. Very nice. And this is a reproduction as well. There's the door of the office. So I'm not covering anything up. It's very nice, beautiful. And then next to it is a very antique stand. Um, it has threaded wood nuts on the bottom of these posts that hold it all together. I don't think there's any metal in it. And that's how they did it back in the day. On top of it is a very large bronze, again, music oriented, as you can see. Very nice. Give me a good look at her. All starting at a dollar. Now, this particular bronze is listed as having sold for $16,000 on another site. Um, I can't speak to the veracity of that exact number, but somebody wanted it. So that's what this sold for at one time. Starts at a dollar. Finally, there's this piece from these two pieces from Candelus or Candelus, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but um, he's again a well known artist. These are original oils. This obviously the man is a violinist, as my uncle was. You see the violin in his arm. And I think it's a violin. And I think it's a dog, or maybe it's a cat, or a skunk, I don't know. But kind of tells a story. Here's another Candelus, same size exactly, but it's same guy, it's on a bench. Again, a kind of a winter scene. Looks like Europe, living the musician's life, I think. So there you go. Beautiful pieces. Um, Candelus, obviously a well-known painter. You can have him for a dollar, starting at a dollar.